today. A lot of people are going through the difficulties of whether the economy, whether, you know, feeding, whatever it is, people are going through one difficulty or the other. Ramadan is a time to ask Allah for ease, knowing fully well that there is none to turn to and none to run to for help except Him. And so that's why Ramadan for us is a period that we can bring all our difficulties before Him and seek for help from none other than the one that has created us all. And you will find that your difficulties no longer become difficulties. Instead, it is even a means of you going to Allah. Because fasting itself is staying away from the things that you and I need as a means of survival. Your food, your drink, intercourse with your spouses, this is all a means of survival. Procreation, it's a means of survival, right? But then you are leaving all of that for the sake of Allah. That is a difficulty. But you have done it only for Him. Which is why the one who fasts in Ramadan, Iman and Muhtisab and Mufira Lahu, Mataqaddaba bin Dambi. Whoever fasts in Ramadan with faith. The faith here is you are fasting not because every other person is fasting alone, not just because it's a pillar. You are fasting because it's an act of worship that you know will bring you closer to Allah as a pillar. And then you are firm and you are expectant of the reward from Him. Allah will forgive you all of your past sins. So that forgiveness, that feeling of earning the forgiveness of Allah, of getting closer to Allah, of asking for His help, because of the difficulties we are facing, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I will end with this point, saying that as Shaykh al-Fadil has arrived, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and preserve him, and I pray that what he would deliver to us all is as beneficial as we hope it would be, especially as we prepare for the coming of this wonderful month, the blessed month of Ramadan, the month in which we seek the forgiveness and the pardon and the mercy of our Lord. And I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant this gathering the ease to understand and to implement and make us amongst those whom we listen and we follow with good deeds. الَّذِينَ يَسْتَبِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ وَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنِ أَقُلِقُ لِهَذَا وَاسْتَكْفِرُ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ Jazakallah khairan wa barakallahu fika. Alhamdulillah, this is um, our Amir Wan Uma, the one of the most aspiring Islamic organization in Abuja. Jazakallah khairan. Alhamdulillah, um, our Sheikh has arrived. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have him here today. A very big opportunity and honor for all of us to have him. Most of us must have heard his name or listened to him on social media. Today, inshallah, is one on one. Atabir! Alhamdulillah. Um, as he's taking his one or two, three minutes of resting, inshallah, we call on Amir of Light of the Ummah. Um, Ustaz Hamza Sulu to please give us the welcome address, inshallah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our life to witness today to have Sheikh on our midst. Alhamdulillah, we also thank you all for attending this uh, important 
pre Ramadan lectures. Uh, I want to sincerely thank the team, uh, one um, uh, lot of the Umar team that um, organized these lectures. It was um, just a few days they thought about it. I would think it's right. Alhamdulillah, he, a sheikh out of his busy schedule, we were able to have him. We really thought it was going to be very tough to get him outside Kano around this time. But mashallah, he is here with us, and inshallah, we will get to benefit from the lectures, mashallah. The title of the lectures is going to be Maximizing Ramadan Benefits, if I'm correct. Maximizing the rewards of Ramadan, inshallah. Uh, Shaq will be talking to us, inshallah, about an hour plus, and for which we are going to learn so much. Be easy, light, Allah. Uh, I will not talk much. Uh, we just um, welcome all of us here to this important gathering. May Allah be pleased with us, and may Allah make us to listen attentively and also learn from the vast knowledge that he has endowed the Shaq with. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you once again for coming. Um, Hamza Suru. We engage in Ramadan feeding yearly to lots of families that are less privileged. We also engage in medical caravans and medical procedures such as eye cataract surgery. Like in 2023, about 150 people were treated free in Hadeja Jigawa states. Part of the Ramadan feeding we've done in Kogi State, in Kano, Katsina, Jigawa, Yobe, Borno, and other states. So as in the flyers here, um, we encourage the Muslim Ummah to donate in this course. We have the account numbers and, uh, um, on the flyers, and um, we do encourage everyone to uh, be part of this. It's a Sadaqatul Jaria. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening and having time to come and listen to our able sheikh. You are most welcome. Jazakumullahu khairan. And um, this is just brief about light of the ummah. Assalamu alaikum. Atakbir. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Muhammad bin Uthman bin Shu'aib bin Adam bin Uthman bin Saleh was born in Kefi, Nasarawa state of Nigeria in early 1963. He grew up in Kano state. He began his study at his early age in front of Ulama, where he memorized the Holy Quran at a tender age and later continued with other Islamic books of fiqh, tawheed, and hadith, and others. Sheikh Muhammad bin Uthman is an international scholar of repute with vast followership not only in Nigeria but among all Hausa speaking Muslims in West and Africa. Sorry, in West and Central and beyond. He has thousands of followers across his social media platform. He is very fluent in Arabic and English language. Ben Uthman has his own style of lectures, bringing people together and encouraging Muslims to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a unique style of that. Bin Uthman's personable style and down-to-earth approach has made him one of the most sought-after scholars in our time. He has endeared himself to people with his loved lecture series, Tafsir, thus allowed him to world spreading a simple but profound message of doing good. Bin Uthman is a great scholar 
that everybody wants to be with. He has been with light of the Ummah, and one Ummah for a long time now. And Alhamdulillah, there has not been any day that we do not want to listen to his lecture. There are a lot here to say about Bin Uthman, but we have a particular time allotted for this to be taken, inshallah. In order not to eat too much deeply into his time, we want to stop here. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all his struggle for Islam and we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ushers him into Jannah, al Jannah for those. Now at this point, I want to present to you the lecturer of the day, Shaykhana Muhammad bin Uthman. At the day, and like we said, the topic is maximizing the reward of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, inshallah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina wa habibina wa azimina wa qaidina Muhammad ibn Abdillahi al-Sadiq al-Ameen wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi al-ghurri al-mayameen wa ala kulli man sara ala min walihi wa aqtafa atharahu bi isanin ila yawm al-qarari wa al-khulud wa al-thabat wa al-deen Amma ba'du fa salamu allahi alaykum wa rahmatu minuhu wa barakatuhu jami'an Today is the 21st day of the month of uh, Sha'aban, the eighth month of Islamic calendar, 1445 Hijri, in brackets, the second day of the month of uh, March 2024. Uh, the topic has been made known to all of us here that maximizing the rewards of Ramadan. So beautiful, well chosen topic of discourse and topic of uh, uh, talking about. <clears throat> now, you see, first, what do we mean by Ramadan? Ramadan. R A M A D A A N. But before then, let me say, my brother said I am X, Y, Z, I am not. I am just Muhammad ibn Uthman, student of Islamic studies. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah, when people said a lot about him, what did he say? He said, analyst to be shay. Wala minni shay, wala li shay. I am nobody and I have nothing. Similarly, Abu Bakr al Sadi, when people talk about the encomiums, they say, look, he says, Allahumma ja'alni khairan mimma yudhunnun. وَقِنِي شَرَّ مَا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَلَا تُؤَخِذِّي بِمَا يَقُلُونَ Oh Allah, do make me better than their expectation. Don't take me into account upon their utterances. If they, and they were whom they were, talk like this, then who am I? Just a little creature. So I am just Muhammad bin Uthman, that's all. Barakallahu feekun for good things you have said. The word Ramadan, Ra Ma'dan, Ra'um bil Fatha, Mimum bil Fatha, Dodum Fatha, Madda Nun, Ramadan. You see, it's taken from the Sarfu etymological part of Arabic language, Sarf. That is Ramadan Fa'alan. Fa'alanu Ramadan. Sufiyanu Fu'ulanu. Okay, Nu'manu Fu'ulanu. This is Sarf. But the meaning of Ramadan is taken from what, you know, an Arab poet say. He says, Al-Mustajiru bi'amrin inda kurbatihi kal-mustajiri min ar-ramda'i bin-nahi. Meaning, whoever that 
looks for an assistance from Amru. He was being sarcastic against Amru. We call this hijab. Just like somebody trying to be away from the heat by placing his hand on a highly heated storm. Meaning, Ramadan is taken from heat. Because the month Ramadan comes, used to come to them when the sun was ferociously heated. From that, the name was extracted. It is expected that the sins are being burnt down on account of our fasting. This is the hikmah. Similarly, Ramadan is from Ar-Ramadu, like I have said, or from ar or from ar Three things. ar the heat. ar the face of the earth, highly heated by the sun. ar going after an animal in the wilderness during hot season. So the properties given to the meaning of the word just revolves around heat and the like. But technically, Ramadan is the ninth month between Sha'aban and what? And Shawwal. Sha'aban, this one, the eighth. Shawwal, the tenth. It is the month in which the Quran was revealed. The word Ramadan is mentioned in the Quran only once. Ramadan is mentioned in the Quran only once. Just like Iman. Iman is mentioned in the Quran 811. Iman. But Ramadan once in ayah 185. Shahr Ramadan ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an Look at it, Ramadan Now, we fast in the month of Ramadan globally Globally Because in ayah 183 of Al-Baqarah, Allah says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun O you who believe fasting has been made obligatory on you the way it was made on those who came before you la'allakum This is mahal al-shahid Perchance, hopefully, likely you're going to learn your ways you're going to fear Allah the Almighty. So, the actual rationale behind Ramadan being prescribed or fasting is for us to have the inculcation of fear of Allah in us. Uh, now, how do we maximize the benefits of Ramadan? I'm going to analyze. 10 points, inshallah ta'ala, in order to explain the ways, the modus operandi, if you like it, on how to benefit maximally from Ramadan and the Ramadanic periods. But let me warn you, first let me warn myself, don't be a Ramadani Muslim. Don't be a Ramadani Muslim. But you should be a Rabbani Muslim. What does that mean? Allah says, وَلَكِمْ كُنُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ Be true Muslims. Ramadani Muslim is the one that is only Muslim when Ramadan comes. He is the Ramadani Muslim. So the essence of Tantakun in 1A3 is means on this kind of poor person. Ramadani Muslim is the one that keeps away from committing adultery, drinking during Ramadan. When it is gone, he goes back to status quo ante. He is a Ramadani Muslim. Walakim kunu Rabbaniyin. Bima kuntum tu'allimun al kitaba wa bima kuntum tadrusu. So don't be just Ramadani Muslim or Ramadani Muslim, but Rabbani. 
Rabbani is a Muslim perpetual, perpetually, ceaselessly, endlessly. So don't be just Ramadani Muslim. You know, it baffles me. When Ramadan comes, especially last 10 days, you see the mosque filled to brim. But when Ramadan goes away, the congregation began to become slim, 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 slim and slimmer until you find yourself in a situation that makes you gasp. Having all this heart, once again, Allah talks about fasting. Then what is fasting? Part of my style in talking, I talk, I inquire. So I'm going to ask you. As I talk, I will ask you. Like I have been saying in Hausa, then in Tabbatad de Chiwa, Bokit and Karfe, Niki Zuba, Marua, Ba, Konduba. And you are not Kondos, I do believe. You are Bokatan Karfe. Unless if you want to prove me wrong. So as I talk, I ask. Okay, what is fasting? Literally. Literally, fasting is abstinence, keeping away from something. You see, Maryam alayhi salam in chapter number 18, sorry, chapter 19, when she gave back to Prophet Isa, she looked at him, bewailing her situation. What did he tell her? قَالَ فَإِنَّا تَرَيْنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَظَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا The point is, نَظَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا He said, Mom, if you come across people asking you, how did you come about having me? Tell them, I have promised to perform, I mean to do fast. I will never talk to anybody today. So here, keeping away from talking is considered as fasting. Literally. Literally. If I say my hand is fasting, that means I will never touch anything. And I'm standing. My eyes will be fasting. Don't look at anything. Literally. But technically, fasting, listen to the definition. Fasting in the technical sense of it is al imsaku an al akli wa shurbi wal jama'i wal hadiyani min ulu il fajri ila ghurub al shams biniyat al ibada. That is fasting. If you are looking for the Scholastic definition of fasting. This is fasting as explained. One minute. That is fasting. I will take it again. Asiyamu in Arabic. Listen. Asiyamu. Huwa tarkul akli wa shurbi. والجماع والحذيان من طلوع الفجر إلى غروب الشمس بنية الإبادة. Translation: Fasting is keeping away from number one eating, number two drinking, number three sexual contact, number four obscene and dirty utterances that is for con for condition from the dawn number five to the sun with the intention of serving allah can we, do, can we leave it just talk like this okay i could imagine a Jamil, this is fasting. I'm repeating. 
because the Arabs are saying ma takarrara takarrara the oft repeated is of assimilated asiyamu wa tarkul akli wa shurbi wal jima'i wal hadayani min tulu' al fajr ila ghurub al shams fasting keep away from eating that's number 1 drinking sexual intercourse obscene and dirty utterances like lying like backbiting like anami manchi gossiping peddling rumors character assassination from the dawn condition number 5 to the sunset ثم اتم الصيام الى الليل with all these six conditions one thing remains with the intention of serving allah if you say well i am doing just to exercise my body that is nothing that is fasting simply put it fasting is ترك كل المفطرات ترك كل المفطرات anything that vicious the fasting leave it that is fasting it was made mandatory in medina because chapter 183 i mean verse 3 al baqara was in medina reveal before telling you how to maximize the ramadanic benefits fasting is one of the fundamental pillars of islam we know all this how do we establish sighting in the new moon or sighting in it if two just people just people of unquestionable character al udul two of them if they can confirm to us we have seen the new moon then we start fasting the following day but those to tell us have to be adilani or adlan then who is al adl The ulama tell us that al-adl man yajtanibul kaba'ira wa yattaqi fil ghalib as-saghaira that is al-adl al-adl man yajtanibul kaba'ira wa yattaqi fil ghalib as-saghaira that is al-adl is such a man such a person that keeps away from major sinful acts the minor ones he tries struggles to just keep away this is al-adl al adil cannot commit zina abadan al adlu cannot consume intoxicant abadan cannot even smoke cannot be a liar a thief he cannot be cannot be a lesbian a'udhu billah or sodomizer a'udhu billah all right if people of this caliber two of them tell us then fasting should be started in earnest if it is only one adil it becomes incumbent upon him and his family to do it but if the number rises to say more than 10 because of the sheer numerical strength the fasting can be started this is very important to know all these to refresh your memory if anybody denies the indispensable to fasting becomes a kafir Yeah because the ulama are saying kullu man ankara ma ulima min ad-din bi dharura kafir listen kullu man ankara ma ulima min ad-din bi dharura kafir who ever that denies something believed to be of necessity in the din then he becomes a kafir should somebody say well fast not wajib he becomes a kafir wa na'udhu billahi min dhalik You cannot say well let me go to retire to my bed in case new moon has been sighted i am fasting tomorrow that is haram don't do that it's called siyam yawm ash-shak until the new moon has been seen and sighted before you start doing it very important fasting if you started it control your utterances like you've had the definition your gazes should be controlled jazakumullah khaira and let me ask you somebody is fasting 
accidentally, incidentally, he drinks water. Then he said, oh, subhanallah, puts it down. Is, he fa is his fasting intact? I'm asking you. Intact after drinking water? You say yes, justify your yes. Justify it. He drinks water. And you're saying, yes, this is fast. He say yes, because he did it inadvertently, not intentionally. If somebody meets his wife, the broad daylight and run around, what is the status of his fasting? His wife. He meets her during the daylight. She succumbs, he succumbs. They, do, they did it. Is their fasting intact? A capital no. Now, what is the way out? It's kafara. Expiation, atonement. In a hadith, one man said, Ya Rasulullah, halaktu wa ahlaktu. I am doomed. And I have called somebody to be doomed. What? He said, I met my wife. The Prophet said, well, go and do kafara. Give, feed 60 people. He said, I don't have the means, Ya Rasulullah. He said, okay, wait, wait, wait. Somebody brought some food amounting to what is needed. He said, go and give it to them. He said, Ya Rasulullah, a'ala afkara minni? Shall I give it to somebody poorer than myself? I need the food now. He said, okay, go and eat it. The Prophet said, smile. So from this, we're able to know if you do this irresponsible thing, this is the judgment, this is the fatwa. But if somebody eats intentionally, he eats his own banana in the morning after, what is the judgment? Kafara? No. He only pays back one day. According to the most important legalistic line of argument. I know the Malikis I say no, he should do kafara because of sadd dhariya. But it lacks substance that argument. I can assure you. Somebody is on a journey, say from Abuja to Lagos, just to watch football. Can he break his fasting? Can he? Because Allah says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَى Now he is, he is on a journey. Allah says, سَفَرٍ بِالنَّكِرَى You know the law? أَنَّكِرَةُ فِي سِيَاقِ الْإِثْبَاتُ تُفِيدُ لِسْتِغْرَاقِ Whoever is uh, sick, unwell, or on a journey, a journey with indefinite article, let him eat on some of the days later. So I am saying, he's going to Lagos, an example, or anywhere, to participate in dancing competition. Ya Salaam. Can he break his fast? I'm asking you. You cannot be quiet. You cannot, as I told you, you have to talk to me. It has been an interactive session. Uh -huh. I go talk, make not talk. All right. Is this, okay, yes, sir. He cannot break his fast. Reason. Okay, okay. Now the ulama are saying if somebody is on a journey that is believed to be an act of Zubayn Allah, he cannot benefit from this Allah's magnanimous provision. Because of the zariah. But some are saying, no, 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 no. As long as he is a Muslim, and he believes what he's doing is haram. Why do you deny him Allah's chance? And that is our belief. His sinfulness is there recorded. Being a Muslim, you can't deny him. May Allah forbid us from doing such a thing. Now, this is a very important thing to know before going to some of those ways to make you benefit from Ramadan and Ramadanic uh, seasons. Now, here are some ahadith. You know hadith? We know hadith. I'm going to give you some narratives of hadith of Sallallahu that talk about Ramadan and its value. Hadith number one, 
اس انسان نسائی ان اولسو البانی ڈکلیز دے حدیث حسن انسات جی صحیح الجامع دے حدیث آف ابو حرارت انو ابو حرارت one of the most important sahaba that memorized the ahadith, more than 5,000. In fact, al-imamu, yani as-siyuti, mentions Abu Hurra as the first in terms of those who memorized the ahadith. They are seven in a beautiful poem. He says, وَالْمُكْثِرُونَ فِي رِوَايَةِ الْأَثَرْ أَبُو هُرَيْرَ تَيَّلِيهِ بْنُ عُمَرْ وَآنَسٌ وَجَابِرٌ then he says, Wajabirun Kal Khudri Wazajatun Nabi. They are seven. Abu Huraira tops the list. The Prophet says in this hadith, Atakum Shahru Ramadan. Listen to the quotation. Atakum Shahru Ramadan. The Prophet is talking. The month of Ramadan has arrived amongst you. Who are those you? We, the Ummah of Muhammad. Atakum Shahru Ramadan. شهر مبارك a blessed month فرض الله عليكم صيامه الله has prescribed upon you fasting it الله أكبر then he says تفتح في أبواب الجنة the gates of the paradise are open when Ramadan sets in وتغلق في أبواب الجحيم the gates of جحيم you know جحيم is one of the seven gates of hellfire. أعوذ بالله. لها سبعة أبواب لكل باب منهم جزء مقصود. In chapter number fifteen, one gate is called جهنم, another one is called جحيم, another gate is called سقرة ما سلككم في سقرة, another is called لظا كلا إنها لظا, another is called حاوية. فأمه هاوية Another one is called They are seven اللهم نأوذ بك من النار You know hellfire? أأوذ بالله In Quran 3.192 Allah says ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيت وما للظالمين من أنصار Whoever you admit to the hellfire He has completely been humiliated يا الله نأوذ بك يا الله نأوذ بالله So he says In the month of Ramadan The gates of Jahim's are shut, closed down completely. The rebellious satans, the evil ones, the devils are enchained and manacled in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, there is a night. خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْفِي شَهَرٌ نَلْفِي رواية ورش النافي ألفي عاصم أو حفظ عاصم There is a night by far much much better more rewardable than a thousand months You see in the month of Ramadan if you are lucky اللهم جعلنا من أهل السعادة You mean the little Qadr wonderful That one night is as though you have worshipped Allah for 83 consecutive years 83 because a thousand months gives you this number just one night is in the month of Ramadan you can ill afford being of like a behavior drawn back sleeping snoring snoring digging nothing when other good people are trying giving punches to the Satan you waste your time on social media without any justification. Ya Rabbal Alameen, Sallimna Ya Allah. Min sharri anfusina. Okay? This hadith, listen well. Then he says, Man hurima khayra Whoever that is denied the benefit of that very night, faqad hurima. Indeed, he is the one highly denied. Ya zama marra bukina. When the dick ya kasa samu al khair and ching amfanu wa nandar to wa nand tap up bay kinan damal malalli tap up barri mara al ziki kumakina wana udhu billahi min thalik this hadith I told you where I have taken it 
part of our training, if you cut hadith, give the source. Don't lie against the Prophet. He says, Man kadaba alayhi muta'amidan, let's make him not. In Al Hakim Mustadra. Hadith number one. Are you following me? Am I communicating? Am I? Hadith number two. The Prophet says, He says, Buni al Islamu Allah, Allah khamsin. Shahadati Allah ilaha illallah, number one. Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, part of it. Then wa iqami salat, number two. Wa ita is zakat, number three. Wa hajjul bayt, number four. Wa sawmi Ramadan, mahal shahid. This is the point. Islam is structured, is built upon five pillars. The creed, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Number two, establishing first Salam day, prayers. Allah says, Aqimi salata, little location to the end of it. And number three, giving zakat, going for hajj, and then fasting in the month of Ramadan. This hadith is muttafaqun ali. Shall I ask you, what is muttafaqun ali? Ana tullab al hadith, minku. Who are those? Yes, sir. Muttafaqun ali. What the meaning of this technicality? Bukhari wa Muslim. Thank you. But you leave one thing. There is one juz you have to add. The ulama when they say muttafaqun, they say naam. Kullu hadithin ittafaq ala takhrijihi al-Bukhari wa muslimun an tariqi sahabiyin. So you have to add this one. An tariqi sahabiyin wahidin. Otherwise, definition is incomplete. Bukhari and Muslim through one sahabi. There has to be that unity. Otherwise, it's incomplete. Okay? So this hadith is muttafaqun ali. There is the mention of Ramadan inside. Hadith number three. Listen. This hadith, Imam al Albani declares it hasan. What is hadith al hasan? Wal hasan al ma'arufa turqan wa ghadat rijaluhu la kasahi ishtar, according to al Baykuni. Hadith al hasan with this title, with this or this qualification, is second to hadith sahih. It has applicability, almost near to hadith sahih. So Imam al Albani, that great guru of hadith compendiums, has declared this hadith accepted. Imam Tirmidhi reported this hadith, hadith number 3545. Listen, the Prophet says, He says, Rahima, am for Rajulin, Dukir to Indahu, Falemi Sali Aleya. Waragima, am for Rajulin, Dahala Alehi Ramadanu, Thumman Salaha Kabla and Yogufara Lahu. وراغم انف رجل ادرك اباه عنده الكبر او احدهما فلم يدخله الجنه لا اله الا الله the prophet says he is doomed such a man that my name is mentioned to his hearing without saying salat on me he is doomed راغم النبي شي الله يترمز Hanchum mutum a quarter, quarter me do equa, two wonders are a kira sunana, Manzan Allah, be means a latigo, Allah don't want to listen. So when you hear Muhammad say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number one, number two, he says he is doomed any person that Ramadan will set in until it comes to an end without doing something to justify for him. Allah's granting him entry into the paradise. This is the point here. This is the point. وَرَغِمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ دَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ رَمَضَانُ ثُمَّنْ سَلَخْ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُغْفَرَ لَهُ Ramadan comes and goes away. He did nothing. That Allah will say, okay, I have forgiven you. Let me tell you something very pathetic. In 2020 or 2019, I was in Haram in Kaaba for my Umrah. You know what happened? Then Allah gave me the opportunity of uh, performing etikaf, seclusion or retreat. I just came out of my place of stay within the Kaaba to go and ease myself in the nearby restaurant. 
around Miss Falaway, uh, Ibrahim Khalil Way. Last 10 days of Ramadan, last 10 days. In the vicinity of Kaaba. After Asr, as I entered the restroom, on coming out, there was the smoke of cigarette coming from one restroom. I say, La ilaha illallah. Somebody is knocking. And what can you do? He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim anyway. But smoking this time? In Mecca, around Kaaba, in the month of Ramadan, last 10 days, and after Asr, why can't you be patient? That is Satan. Unless it's the Quran chapter number 35, verse number 6. Inna shaytana lakum adun fattakhiduhu aduwa innama yad'u hizbahu liyakunu min ashabi sayyid. Satan. Na'udhu billahi min ashshaytan al-layid rajeem. This is hadith number two. Hadith number three, he says, Man sama Ramadana, Ramadan is mentioned here. Man sama Ramadana, imanan. What again? Wahtisaban. Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Wa man qama laylat al-qadri imanan wahtisaban. Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Abu Hurarata. In Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2018, and Muslim, hadith 760. Whoever that fasts the month of Ramadan, Iman and out of his belief, what is Saban? Desirous of Allah's rewards. All his sins are worked out. Still, on the value of uh, the month of Ramadan. That is, how many hadiths have I mentioned to you? How many? How many have I mentioned so far? Are you not with me? How many have I so far mentioned? Hmm? There are four. Four. Because you don't write. The ulama are saying, Ma kutiba karra, wa ma hufiba farra. What is documented is maintained. What is hard escapes to the thin air. If you want to benefit from learning, reduce the documentation. You don't write. Some, as a talker is talking, he begins to doze. If there is Takim, it's Allah Akbar. What did he say? This is it's not part of the teaching we have, we have written as scholars. As you write, things have the chances of being what? Retained and assimilated. May Allah guide us aright. Now, after hearing all these, here are some 10 to 11 ways through which you can maximize the Ramadan reward. Number one, purifying your intention that this is an ibadah. Fasting is an act of worship to Allah the Almighty. And worship has three conditions. Condition number one, it has to be preceded by an order by Allah or from Allah. Take for example in Quran chapter 22 verse number 41 what does Allah say here He says wa adhin fi nas bil hajj atuka rijala wa ala kulli dhamirin yatina min kulli fajr amiq Make declaration to the people to come for her so there is an order here Similarly in Quran al-Baqarah 2196 Allah says what wa atimmu al-hajj wa al-umrah lillah Fulfill the umrah There is an order Similarly, in Sam Baqarah Ayah 197, Allah says, Al Hajju Ashuru Ma'alumat. Before you do any act of worship, there has to be a precedent order. In chapter 66, verse number 9, Allah says, What? He says, Ya ayuhan nas, Ya ayuhan ladina amanu idha nudiya lis salati mi yomil jum'ati fas au ila thikrillah. There is an order to go for Jum'ah. That is condition number one. And fasting, I quoted the ayah 183 in Al Baqarah, Kutiba Alaykum Asiyah. If you want to maximally maximize the rewards, there has to be good intention from your own end. That is number one. Follow me. I'll give you 10. Take them. Number two, reading the Quran. Oh, mashallah. Billahi al Azim. 
any Muslim, any Muslimah that fails through the Quran, especially in the month of Ramadan, is a gallant loser. Caught me well, is a gallant loser. You wonder at my qualification, gallant. I know what I'm saying. Because it's an awesome loss. Read the Quran, read it. Al Imam Shafi'i, in the month of Ramadan, they say he used to complete Quran 60 times. In Ramadan. That means he is doing khatma how many times a day? How many times a day? Twice. How did he do it? I don't know. Because he was maximizing his what? But you are busy with your WhatsApp. With your chatting, 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 chatting the chatable. Okay? Read the Quran. Somebody told me in Canada, he said, Wallah, ya Sheikh, my wife. When Ramadan sets in, she completes Quran four times. She has tried now. That is weekly. Correct? Weekly. My sisters, our mothers, you can do that. Even better. You can do that, definitely. You two can do it. Don't tell me, oh, I am too busy. This is your business number one. Business number one, no matter earn. The friend will tell you. Read the Quran. Read it. Read it. Read it. Believe you me. Al Imam al Bukhari used to complete Quran on daily basis. Daily. Al Bukhari. Ya Allah. Min al Mu'minin rijalun sadaqu ma ahadullah alayh. Faminum man qada nahba. Faminum man yad tadil. Oma baddalu tabdila. You see somebody. Quran is only read by him. What? Well, in the month of Ramadan. He only listened to Quran behind an Imam. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالج آمين. That's all. Can't you read it? In a hadith, اقرأ القرآن فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيئا لأسحابي. Read Quran. It will come as interceder for those who read it. You didn't read it. In the hadith of Abu Umamat al-Bahili in Muslim, specifically he talks about Baqarah. He says, اقرأوا سورة البقرة فإن أخذها بركة وتركها حصرة ولا يستطيئها البطلة. Says the Prophet. Read al-Baqarah. Maintaining Baqarah is a source of blessings. If you leave it, it causes for you to bite your finger in an anguish. So, number two, one of the ways of maximizing your rewards is Quran reading. From now, set your program in motion. Tell Allah, oh Allah, I intend when Ramadan comes and go into the Quran four times from cover to cover. Between you and your creator, make the promise. Your life will be positively changed. al quran Baqarah, al quran Barakah. That is number two. But I am of the view, don't complete Quran in less than three days. Yeah. Those scholars written in 60, oh, that is their own way. But sunnatically speaking, it should be not less than three days because of the hadith of Abdullahi ibn Amr ibn al As. Do it. And I am of the opinion if you want to read weekly, it should be every Friday. Every Friday. Especially in the month of Ramadan. Yeah. Every Friday, and especially during Asr time, you have your completion. Alif la min al jinnat wa nas, go back. If Allah chooses you to be like this, oh, may Allah choose us, Ya Rabbul That is number two. But you see what? You read in the Quran, you read it with what? The laws punctuating the recitation. Tajweed. Correct? Allah says, Waratil Qurana. Tartila. You cannot come bring into the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Is it Quran? Alantara kaifa. Alantara kaifa. Gerul Magarubi. What are you saying? 
They read it diligently, competently. The scholar says, وَالْأَخْذُ بِالْتَجْوِيدِ حَتْمُ اللَّازِمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُجَوِّدِ الْقُرْآنَ آثِمُ لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنْزَلَ وَأَكَذَ مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَا وَصَلَا Reading the Quran based on tajweed is a necessity. Let me ask you. I will read and I will ask you to correct my recitation. I'm going to ask you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر Is it correct recitation? Is it correct? Is it correct? إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر Is it correct? You see now? You see? You cannot get a reward until the recitation is punctuated by the loss of tajweed. My qara is incorrect. Who says no amongst you here? Sister. Okay, please correct me. Barakallahu feek. Correct me. Time, time, time. Should we give you mic? Eh, give her. Somebody come here. Yes, give her, give her, give her. This is the learning process. I say in uh, Anzal now, let her correct my recitation. Thank you. W okay, w where is the mistake here? Where is the missing link? Explain. The matter. It's only in, uh, you didn't drag it to the required, um, but that is jais. It's not what that is jais. Okay. Uh -huh. Jamil. Say it again, man. Ah ah. Gal khairi. Rabba rabba. Ya sawko. Badaw ki kabra rabba. Ya salam. Barakallah fiq my sister. Correct. You see. Wal akhdu bi tajwidi hatmu lazimu man lam yujawid al qana afim. She said. There is ghunna, and it's correct. There is ikhfa. Inna anzalna. How can you say inna anzalna? I'm somebody who say, A'uzu billahi min ishidan razimi. Razimi? A'uzu billahi razimi. La. Wallahi ni wazan bika sallahu. The one man deepa na'ana. One na muta wazan she geta wallahi. So I am saying, Reading the Quran and number two and number three, add to the list. Teaching people the Quran. Another way you maximize your life. Wallahi love it. Especially our mothers collect your children. Every morning of Ramadan. Hey, come on. Read the Quran. Set aside one hour before going to the school. And especially during weekends. Alhamdulillah, I have inculcated in my kids back home this culture and I have seen how beneficial it has been for me and for them as well teach them Quran especially in Ramadan teach them Quran in the month of Ramadan look at the rhyming okay the hadith of Uthman says man Quran wa allama. the base of you is such that loves them and teaches others. This is the third way how you will maximize your rewards in the month of uh, Ramadan. Then number four. Is it three or four? Four. Feeding people. Feeding, feeding. Don't be odd handed, please. Amongst you, somebody can promise to sacrifice 50 bucks of rice in the month of Ramadan. 50 bucks. I know rice now is exorbitant in terms of price, okay? But it's affordable to some people. Wallahi al-Azim. Or the mosque in your community, in your neighborhood, promise Allah, I am going to provide things for breaking the fast. Do something in the month of Ramadan. Because of the greatness of the what. Actions are doubly, quadruply, quintuply rewarded as well. Ayo Allah. 
so fit. This is because of a hadith uh, of Ibn Majah and Ibn Hibban and At-Tirmidhi declares the hadith Sahih. The hadith of Zayd ibn Khalid al johari The Prophet ﷺ says, Man fattara sa'iman, whoever feeds somebody doing fast, whoever that feeds the you know, fasting person, okay, kana lahu mithlu ajrihi, he has the reward equal to the man doing fast, without reducing from his own reward of anything. So you wouldn't say, ah, you're going to get my road, I will not take it. No, 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 no. Allah is bounteous. Okay? So giving food to those doing fasting is another important way of maximizing our rewards in the month of Ramadan. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Number five. Taraweeh. But before going further, you do know, much as I do, I do, in these difficult times we are passing through. Inflationary trends in Nigeria today. A lot of people today cannot eat three times a day. Today. Believe you me. You will cry for some people. Maybe you are lucky you can eat your breakfast well, your lunch, whatever. There are those who wake up without anything, they retire to the bed with anything. Some years, some of our boys went to an area in Kano. They came back to report to me, say, yes, Sheikh, Allah, we went to an area, we entered the house of a lady, we met her with four kids, orphans. She was crying, shedding tears on them. Allah Akbar. They had pit toilet, was full. The smell was I think, unbearable. They told me we just gave her one mood of rice, one mood, and she began to cry. She said, "So people like us have been now recognized, have been now been recognized. One mood of rice. Their father died." It sent me shedding tears. This is one out of countless narratives in our society today. Allahu Akbar. When some are grown out of obesity because of eating, 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 eating. Look at it. So why can't you set a mechanism in motion going around to find out people of this nature, feed them? Well, it reminds me, this thing I narrated one day in an area outside Nigeria. One boy there said, Yeah, Sheikh, give me the account number. He sent 100 American dollars to her back in Nigeria. When it was changed, it was 30,000. Then, then, not today. May Allah revive our currency. On hearing this, what? Like this, yeah. It happens. So you can feed those in need of being fed in the month of Ramadan, most especially. And if you do it, do not brag. I am the one feeding you. Don't. لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى كالذي ينفق ماله رئاء الناس. Do not spoil the chances of the reward of the sadaqah. Uh, Allah will just thrash it away. So I said number four call, Taraweeh. Now I have just gone back again, I think. I think it's number four or five. Tell me so far, how much, what did I say? Number one, tell me number one. Purifying your intention. Number two, reading the Quran. Number three, teaching the Quran. Number four, Faded. Yes. Okay. Number five, Taraweeh. Okay. What is Taraweeh? You see, the word Taraweeh is taken from Raha or from Tarweeh. That is having a break. It's a kind of a prayer that is supererogative 
after four raka'at, you just have a break. Because of their length, okay, they are long, long, long what? Raka'at units. The first unit, so long. Read the Quran. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ It's the end of it. You see now, oh, you are tired. Okay, have a rest. That resting informs the meaning of Taraweeh. It can be called Tahajjud if it is in the night. So don't miss your Taraweeh as an important segment of maximizing you are rewards in the month of Ramadan. Taraweeh should be done congregationally. It's much better. But if you are sure of yourself, you can do it alone in your room. Oh yeah. You and your kids, your husband, your wife, your whatever, you can do it inwardly. But an imam has to come out because his absence can cause people's absence. He should come out. Sunnatically speaking, Taraweeh shall be eight raka'ats or eleven. Well, it has been debated uh, line of argument. Some have said twenty, no problem. But we prefer to maintain the actually the sunnatically reported uh, narrative. Eight, but so beautifully saying. Not just rush, 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 rush. From Alam Tarakaifa. Tunasi is finished. Read the Quran well. In the month of Ramadan, La ilaha illallah. You saw gifted children, 15 year old children, 18, with the Quran memorized. Reading of it. This is the miracle of Muhammad. And this is available amongst the girls and amongst the boys. So I am saying, number five, don't miss your taraweeh and tahajjud. You see, any prayer you offer after having your sleep, the break is called tahajjud. Because Allah says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا Mahmuda in chapter number 70. Alright, that is number 5. Are you with me? Number 6, Umrah. Umrah, Umrah. What is Umrah? They call it Lesa Hajj. Lesa Hajj. Allah says, Wa atimu al Hajj wa al Umrata lillah. In Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 196. So going to Umrah, well, affordability matters. Unless if it is affordable. So going for Umrah is another important way to maximize your rewards in the month of Ramadan. This is because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, listen, he said, Umratun, Umratun fi Ramadana. End of quotation. Umratun fi Ramadana. Ta'adilu hajjatan aw hajjatan ma'i. This hadith is muttafaqun Ali, Bukhari and Muslim from Abdullah ibn Abbas. He says performing Umrah in the month of Ramadan is equal to hajj. Ya salam. Are you here now? Can we manage like this? Okay, please off the mic. That's good. Can you hear my, my voice? He says, Umratun fi Ramadana. Umratun fi Ramadana ta'adilu hajjan. He says, doing Umrah in Ramadan is equal to performing hajj. Or oh, hajj with me. Who is that me? Who is that? The Prophet Sallam. Oh, those with money, this is your chance. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma rzuquna. Allahumma rzuquna. Na'udhu bika min al-faqiri. 
Mi aki da talauci da Allah. Allah ya shemu da shi. Allahumma rizquna. That is number what? Number 6. Number 7 eating your last meal, sahur. It's rewardable. It's beneficially rewardable, rewardably beneficial and it's rewarding. Ayu Allah. There are five benefits of sahur. Number 1, if you eat your sahur, you are implementing Allah's law. Number 2, you are being sunnatically driven. Maintain the sunnah. Number three, you are becoming different, different from the Jewish fasting. Number four, it kills the desire of eating in the early morning. Number five, it gives you courage till the sunset. Far benefit of what? Sahur. Naam? You didn't hear? Okay. Can we make progress? Can you hear me? Yes. Should I repeat? Yes. I am saying, by eating your last meal, last supper, last whatever, sahur, you see, sahur is taken from tasahur. There are five benefits attached to eating your last food. Number one, you are obeying Allah. Number two, you are implementing the sonatic order. Number three, you are becoming different from the Jewish fasting. They don't take, your, they don't take suhoor. And number four, it kills in you the urge of eating in the morning. And number five, it makes you what? With stamina and courage throughout the day. Five benefits. Fasting. And there is hadith. It says, Tasaharu fa inna fi suhuri baraka. Al-Bukhari reported it. He says, eat your sahur. In eating sahur, there is barakah. Don't say, no, I don't eat it. Look, you're leaving the Prophet was teaching. Even if it means sipping water. Take something. You don't have to eat belly full. I'm not saying that. Some don't do that. Eat something. Even if it's an apple. Okay? Mouse. That is banana. Take something inside. With the intention of sahur, it is also another way of, inshallah ta'ala, getting reward. Bukhari reported this in Hadith 1923. So also Muslim Hadith 1095. But Bukhari says, Babun fi barakati sahur min ghairi ijab. Min ghairi is not compulsory, he said it. But it's rewardable. So I cannot leave it. Now, here comes this question. For example, I'm eating my sahur. And the muezzin calls to prayer. The last call. And the morsel in my mouth. What do I do? Shall I complete it? Or throw it away? Or I'll complete it. But some are saying it's much better to leave eating your food about 30 minutes before the dawn breaks. Okay? But if you are eaten and there is call to prayer, complete it. Correct? Now we are moving on to point number what? Number eight, keep away from all things forbidden by Allah the Almighty. Especially in Ramadan. I will advise, turn off your TV set. You may interject. Hey, but Sheikh, I am listening to Tafasir. That is an exception. In Indonesia, some years back, Indonesia, the largest Muslim in the world, the largest Muslim number, Indonesia, there was a time they made sure all TV stations showing things, things irresponsible were completely decoded or put off to the air. Because Allah said, Allahum tattaqun. You make sure your cellular phone content good. What you watch should be halal items. In the hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith 2305, listen. The Prophet says, he says, Ittaqil maharim, takun a'abad al-nas. Warda bima qasam allahu laka, takun aghan al-nas. Wa ahsin ila jarika, takun mu'minan. 
وأحب للناس ما تحب لنفسك تكن مسلما ولا تكفر الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تبيت القلب حديث five things he says if you want to be most devoted keep away from things forbidden number two be contented with what Allah has given you you will be the richest of all people number three respect your neighbor then you become a good mu'min number four love for people what you love first you become a good muslim mu'min muslim and number five do not be laughing hysterically because it kills the heart five points so i have decided to mention this in point number eight because it helps you in maximizing what you are rewards in this holy month of ramadan which is upcoming then number number nine tafsir session very very rewardable in the nigerian context we have come to know that uh, our ulama taught us tafsir sessions in the month of ramadan here in national mosque i think they conducted other mosques don't miss it don't in your area if you can organize yourself and your children and your husband your wife you do it together that will be beautiful listen to what allah is saying tafsir you see the kafirun in chapter 25 verse number 30 allah says wa qala rasul ya rabbi inna qawmi ittakhadhu hadha alquran mahjura wa kadhalika ja'alna likulli nabiyyin aduwan min almujrimin wa kafa bi rabbika hadi wa nasira then they say allah says we will send to you a book that is well explained full of tafsir exegesis so it's very important to attend tafsir sessions. The month of Ramadan is very important. Uh, may Allah make it easy for all of us. And then number what? Naam? Special care for the orphans. Wallahi al-Azim. If you can identify a house with orphans, promise Allah you will give them clothes for salah. Allahu Akbar rewardable give them food items take out from them the feelings of the absence of their father the breadwinner somebody told me one man went to market to buy ram during salah idul kabir quickly you know what happened when he bought the ram he delegated somebody take this ram to my house unfortunately the guy that was sent took the ram to the next house when he returned, his kids, Baba Inara Gomu, Bana Turuba. He said, No, 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 it was taken to the next house. The next house, the father in the house died last two weeks. And then the, the, the two I said, No, daddy, go and collect our own back to us. When he listened carefully, he heard the children praying for him. But his children were saying, no, our ram bag, if it were you, what will you do? Answer me. Will you ask them to bring it back or just leave it for them? It's Iman. He told them, I, can't you hear them praying for me? Their father, my friend, is normal. I can, you can be too like them. I can die today. He said, Allah, I have the money. He went back to the market. On reaching the market to buy, the seller of the ram says, I am dashing one to you free. Ya Allah. And the man told him, I have truckload of rams. I had an accident. Most of them died. Only this remain, then I promise Allah, whoever that first come to buy, I will give you. You happen to be the one. <laughs> he didn't know what happened. So take care of the orphans. Number, look, especially, you should open orphanages. Get a Jamara. Do you have one in Abuja? 
Do you have orphanages belonging to the Muslims in Abuja? It's important. Otherwise, others belonging to other divide, they go there and take our children, converting them to Christianity. And we're sleeping, making troubles. Ya Rabbul Alameen. That is point number what? Going to point number? Naam? Visitation to the orphanages and even for adoption. Adopt children. Especially in Ramadan. An adoptee child should not be humiliated in the house. Yeah. Give him all respect. He's a human being too. Number 11, constant prayers. Believe you me. Pray. Pray in the month of Ramadan. Allah says in chapter number 40, Surah to Ghafir, verse number 60, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Ask me and I'll grant you a prayer. I want you to memorize this prayer. All of you say after me. Allahumma. Allahumma. Jannibna munkaratil akhlaq. Warzukuna ahsan al akhlaq. Wajalna min ibadika salihin. This can be more it's very easy to be assimilated. There are many, many, many you can pray. Okay? Pray for peace and stability in our nation. Pray for our children to be properly brought up. Pray for our little girls and daughters to have good husbands. Pray for our boys to have good wives. Pray for recovery of our naira. Pray, 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 pray. Things are rising up. Today in Nigeria, price changes in a week. In a week. In a week. Some say even a day. You go and buy, do you know before coming from, in Kano they told me, I told the kid, go and buy one crate of egg. You know what they told me? They say, Abba, I is nera dubu ukura dalibi neche apasa chidin. You are kept me as I think she go about it. Say, not to go to. It's a trouble. 3,500. Hatagi shiri baang Allah shima adagayo. Salt. As common as salt. Where are we heading to? It's problematic. Oh Allah, come to our rescue. Then, again, pray. The prayer you will be saying in addition to this is the prayer of Aisha. She said, Ya Rasulullah, if I come to know this little Qadr, what should I say? He said, you should be saying, Allahumma innaka afoon to hibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Be saying this constantly. Okay? And number what again? Sadaqa. Sadaqa. Give sadaqa. Don't belittle sadaqa you give. And finally, i'tikaf. You can do i'tikaf in national mosque, in any Juma prayer. The scholars are divided. Can I do i'tikaf in just Khamis Salawat mosque? Some say no. That is the good answer. But some are saying no i'tikaf unless in Makkah and Medina and Al-Aqsa mosque. Because of the hadith of Huzaifa. He says, La atikaf illa fi that masajid. No itikaf recognized but in three mosques. Haram of Medina, Haram of Mecca, and Al Aqsa. Oh, that means our itikaf here is, val is invalid? No. This is my final thing, final note. The ulama are saying, La there, this negation means completeness. No complete itikaf but there. How do you deny me to eat kaf in Abuja? How? So do eat kaf if it is affordable. Some of the girls go in there and boys fear Allah the Almighty. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is fast approaching. Today, 21st day of the month of Shaban, in a matter of 10 days, so nine will be in the Ramadanic sessions. Okay? May Allah elongate our life to this Ramadan. May we have the opportunity that we are with Allah to fast it in the way and manner that are going to be pleasing to Allah the Almighty. May Allah bless you all. May Allah put barakah in your life. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifuna. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen.
walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I'm, I'm afraid. I don't get to the question there. What is the question? Yeah. The question says, if you are traveling from one place to another, mm. but not for the sake of Allah, maybe you are going for a dancing competition or you are going to watch football in Ramadan and you are exhausted, can you break your fast and fast another day? Or I think you are completely hungry, yeah. so weak, can you break it? فمن كان منكم مريضا او على سفر فعدة من ايام اخر ان البقره اي 183 whoever among you is sick or on a journey on a journey i think i explained it then i told you the, the, the division among the scholars if somebody is on a journey and the journey is believed to be an act of disobeying allah 
Can he eat on a candle journey? Some say no, because of the illegality of the trip itself. Some are saying no, he is a Muslim. If he believes what is doing is bad, he can break it. We subscribe to that very view. Yes, even if he is going for like dancing competition or whatever, and he knows it's an act of disobeying Allah, then he can break it because it's a Muslim. Only for him to pay back. And if he is completely exhausted, he is hungry, he cannot manage it. Why not? He breaks the fasting. It's just like what Imam Ahmad says, if somebody is hungry, he cannot tolerate not eating. Otherwise he dies. He said, no, 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 I'm a believer. I prefer to die. If he dies, go to hellfire. Because the same Allah saying no to dead meat is the same Allah saying yes at this particular moment. If there is the rura, it's okay. Whoever that is compelled by the necessity, he eats it. So my answer is simple. He can eat, let him some of the days and repay back. But if somebody is too old to fast, his own is not repaying, but will be just be giving food whenever the sun set. The same thing a breastfeeding lady, woman, or a pregnant woman, the ulama are saying if a lady is heavy with a babe, she cannot fast, let her break her fasting. There are four branches of da'wah concern and fatwa concerning her. The one we take is that she doesn't have to repay her fasting. No. Whenever the sun said she just give food to the people, that's all for her. Some are saying she feel well. We are subscribing to the better fatwa of Abdullahi ibn Abu. This is an addendum to what uh, you have asked me. Yes. The second question is uh, Is there any difference in reading Quran or memorizing Quran in the month of Ramadan and outside the month of Ramadan in terms of the world? Well, I cannot say yes, no, no. Ramadan and Ramadanic period is stupendously rewardable, I told you. So any act of obeying Allah, you expect to have more reward because of the beauty of the time, the hour. Oh yeah. Somebody drinking alcohol in Kaaba, Billah, and somebody drinking it in Lagos, sin is sin. But look at the places. Okay? There, the sacredness is abused there. Additional sin. So the same thing, if you have the Quran in Ramadan, the expectation is that you are going to earn more reward because it was in the month of Ramadan this holy book was revealed. Okay? But I'm not saying that it has to be only in that holy month. So try to memorize it in this month according to your ability. And if you want to memorize it, you set your own methodology. Two, two verses daily. Two verses, you will make it. But there is one verse cannot memorize in two days. Like Ayah 282. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha tadayantum bidaynin ila ajalim musamman faktub. Oh, one ayah consume the whole faith. You can't have it. Unless if you are extremely intelligent, you can make it. So in Ramadan, yeah, it's better you do it in the month of Ramadan. Otherwise, all other days too is rewardable. Is that all? No. So, mashallah. Um, the next question says, my mother wants to speak. She wants to say her own question, inshallah. Okay. Tafadali. Mm. Mm. Wa alaykum as -salam. Jazakillah khaira.
I want your thought about that option. And then secondly, adoption versus, okay, it is also an adoption, but uh, it's not going to an orphanage to adopt. Adopting, um, I want to ask, adoption in an orphanage versus adoption from your own relatives. You have relatives that are orphans. So which one is better? You go to the orphanage or to adopt from your relations that are orphans? Well, yeah. Yeah. Let me start with the last question. Of course, in a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, "Ana wa kafilu liyatimi kahateni fil jannah." I and whoever that adopts an orphan shall be like these in the paradise. That orphan belonging to his lineage or belonging to other people. So it tells you impliedly it is much better you adopt somebody from your own progeny, so to speak. Yeah. The, brother, the son of your elder brother, that brother is dead. Now he's an orphan. It's by far better you adopt him than going to the orphanage. Of course. The daughter of your younger sister is an orphan. Adopt her. Now you are combining two things. You are cementing your relationship and you are doing things to get Allah's reward. You have double reward, actually. So please do that. But let me say, those who are, you know, anathemic, so to speak, don't go to orphanage because it encourages promiscuity. No, I disagree. It is dependent on the modus operandi put in place. You know what? During my tafsir in Kadpoli in Kaduna, I took time off to pay a visit to Haji Alele Dogonyaro's orphanage. Maybe you know her now of late, of blessed memory. They told us, they said, Wallahi, ya Sheikh, you are one of the few scholars that found time to come and visit us. Here, Christians will come here and take Muhammad and there and then give him the name John to our ears. What can we do? Now, with your coming, this is going to be an eye opener. Believe you me, the sin is on the Ummah generally. I know in Kano, in one hospital, one Christian from Sabongari of Kano went to Nasra Hospital. He adopted a child. A Muslim boy, he converted to Christianity. And the person feeling the necessary formalities was a Muslim. So if there is promiscuity, Okay, boarding school should also be disbanded. That also can be what? Promoted. Girl dormitories and boys, you have to demolish hostels of girls and universities in that case. Don't think in that way. al-A'malu bin niyat. You have gone there to save a life. This often can be somebody in future. You don't know. Gift can be killed. Yeah. God give intelligence can be killed if unattended to. Yeah. So wholeheartedly I support going opening orphanages at least to counter the marauding evangelical things they are doing to convert our kids. Please let's wake up to our responsibilities. Wallahu alam. Why reciting the part you know in Salawa? 
Come again, sir. Can you read the uh, Quran translation cover to cover while reciting the part you know? Maybe in Arabic, he means to say, Shah. You see? In Anzalna Quran and Arabia la alakum taqilun. Bilisan in Arabia mubin. The Quran was revealed in Arabic language. The purest form of Arabic. Not broken Arabic, Ashankida, Ashesm, la 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 la. So read the Quran in Arabic. Translation is not Quran. You call it translation. So if you want to read Quran, read it in Arabic. And don't even read it in transliteration. It can be misleading. Something happened one day. In my office in Kano, I was just sitting, then I overheard a guy reading the Quran. You know what I heard? He was saying, Thumma, 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 La Tus Aluna, Yaw Ma'idin, and in the name, Thumma, La Tus Aluna, La. Is it La? Or oh, La? Thumma, La Tus Alun. Allah is swearing, definitely you will be asked. And the guy was reading in the negative, La, you will never be asked. I couldn't tolerate it. I came out. You know what I saw? He was reading from transliterated copy. So that law is L-A. No difference. <laughs> but in Arabic, it's Lam Alif. Correct? I said, Malam Mir Yayaka. Wallahi, my brother he was telling me, I'm a Kanuri man. I was uh, brought up in Lagos. I didn't read the Quran. I felt it's time to come back to north. So on coming to, why don't you go to teacher? Do you know what I say? Allah is swearing it will happen. You say no. I know, of course, that intention, but that cannot exonerate him. So read it in the Arabic language, like I have, like, like I have said. Read in any riwayah you can. It's very important. So my sister, read it. Just read translation and commentary, but actual Quran cannot be in translation. Hope that answers the question. Yes. Inshallah, finally, prophetic meaning for all, sir. Inshallah. Prophetic meaning for all, sir. To? <laughs> prophetic medicine for all, sir. You see, ulcer of any kind, duodenal or gastric, Quranically and sonatically, Read the Quran because Allah says in chapter number 17, verse number 81, We will give the Quran from the Quran that is a blessing and a blessing to the believers, and we will give the blessing to the believers only. The Quran is cure. So to my understanding, any ayah of the Quran, especially the ayah to second, like in surah number 6, verse number 11, وَلَهُ مَا سَكَنَا فِي الْلَيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ You read it, on the water you drink with your iman, you try it for some days by the grace of Allah. And similarly, the oni, Allah talks about oni, fi shifa'ul linnas in chapter number 16. Try it. But I will also tell you go to a competent medical practitioner for additional medication. All right? And finally, under this, the Prophet ﷺ told a man, Ya Rasulullah, my part pains me. He said, put your hand there. Say, Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah three times. Then you should say, Allahumma na'uzubika min sharri ma ajidu wa uhadir. Seven times. So say it repeatedly with your iman, definitely the cure will definitely come. This is my answer to this question. Any other question? My question to you, one question, answer me. Somebody marries a lady today. The marriage has been contracted in the central, in this mosque. For example, after Zuhur, by Asr, the husband dies. Can she inherit him? That a Chigado? I'm asking you. You ask me and I'm asking you back. Somebody marries a lady, the marriage took place by, uh, by Zuhur time. 
in this masjid by after a time like now the man is no more has kicked the bucket as they say can that wife inherit him can she maintain takaba somebody says yes somebody says no my sister saying no prove your no Nam. He married her without consummating the marriage. Nothing happened. Can she inherit him? No. Can she observe seclusion of Idda? Okay. No, no, no. You unko. Naam. Quickly, time. Okay, okay, okay. The marriage was contracted. Prior to consummation, the guy dies. Nothing happened between them. Can she inherit him? him? They say no. What about it that they say no? Do you agree? Do you conquer to their view or no? That is my question. It's not a matter of having issues. He will, she will inherit proof. Proof. Dalil. Okay. Should I answer or just, just go away? No. I thought it's an exercise for you as an assignment. Go and look for the answer. Look. That lady will definitely inherit him. You can't say no. The simple reason is, is she not his wife? What makes her his wife? The mere contracted. Consummation is not a condition. So if he drops date, she is going to inherit him. Perfectly clear. If he leaves 40 million, she gets perfectly 10 million. Because it is rubble. All right, she will also maintain the seclusion of Idda. Because Allah says in Quran, Al-Baqarah 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. He says, وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوْفَوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ أَرْبَأَةَ أَشْرٌ وَأَشْرًا Those of you dying, living wives, he said wives, and she's wife, they will remain for four consecutive months and ten days additionally. So 